Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Porchetta. That's right, or Porchetta, as some of you that refer to bruschetta as bruschetta would refer to it as. But come to think of it, pronunciations really don't matter here because this is not really a porchetta anyway. Real porchetta is actually made with a pork loin and maybe other cuts of pork that are stuffed and tied inside a pork belly. And then that's usually roasted till the inside's cooked and the outside is crispy and amazing. And then they slice that up to make one of the best sandwiches you'll ever taste in your life. So we're going to attempt to simplify that and make a smaller, easier version using pork shoulder, which is what you see right here. That's about a two and a half pound pork shoulder blade roast, it's called. It's boneless and quite often comes with this fishnet style meat lingerie, which we're going to go ahead and pull off. Because what we need to do is butterfly this and sort of unroll it so we can stuff it with all these signature porchetta flavorings. So I'm going to put it up on its side. I'm going to make the first cut about two-thirds of the way down. And then I'm just going to keep slicing and unrolling and unfolding to get as much surface area as possible. By the way, I'll put links in the blog post to other recipes that use this procedure where I spend a little more time showing the technique. But basically, as long as you're not cutting into your hand or down through the meat into the cutting board, you're fine. So once we have that sliced open, I want to go ahead and take the tip of the knife and make some extra slices into whatever looks like connective tissue. Wherever I have a thicker spot, you can make a slice. And I'll be honest, at this point I was thinking, wow, this has way too much connective tissue. This is never going to work. But it was too late to stop, so I decided to keep going, and I'm glad I did. So once we've butterflied that, unrolled it, and slashed it, I'm going to drizzle that with a few drops of olive oil, rub that around. And at that point, we're going to go ahead and add our seasonings, which we're going to do with a very heavy hand. All right, this stuffing is going to be about as subtle as a swift kick to the cannoli, but we don't apologize for that. This has to be really, really generously seasoned. So we're going to sprinkle that with a lot of salt, a whole bunch of freshly ground black pepper, some chopped sage leaves, fresh sage. We're going to do the same with fresh rosemary. And I warned you, we're being extremely generous with this stuff. You almost can't put too much of this stuff in there. And after the herbs, I'm going to grate on some fresh orange zest. That was like from one large orange. And then after that zest, we're going to put on just a little touch of garlic. All right, maybe slightly more than a little. Some people like to make a paste with that. I don't. I like big chunks of garlic. And then last but not least, we're going to take a couple teaspoons of fennel seeds. And I'm going to toss those into mortar and pestle and crush them up a little bit. You can also use a knife or the bottom of a pan. Okay, you don't want someone biting into a whole seed. Plus, by crushing it, you release all the flavor. And then go ahead and sprinkle that on the surface. And once all that's on there, go ahead and take your hand and press it in firmly. And then we're simply going to roll it up. All right, nice and tight. Of course, you're going to want to end up with the seam on the bottom if possible. And then we're going to use our very simple tying method. We'll do like five separate pieces of string. You'll twist it four or five times before you cinch it up, which will hold it tight until you make the knot. You've seen that before. We've done that in lots of videos. So go ahead and tie that up tight. I'm going to sprinkle the outside with a little more salt. And then we're going to put that on a rack and on a plate, and we're going to dry age that for 24 hours in the fridge, uncovered. All right, we're going to give that a full day for all those flavors to be absorbed internally, while externally the surface will dry out a little bit, and it will lose a little bit of moisture, which will intensify the flavors. And after 24 hours in the fridge, it should look like that. Don't be afraid if it darkens up a little bit. Completely normal. At this point, you can preheat your oven to 450. We'll transfer that into a lightly oiled baking pan. We'll rub on just a little more olive oil to give the surface a nice color. And once that oven's hot, let's pop it in at 450 for 15 minutes just to get that outside seared. After 15 minutes, I want you to reduce the heat to 250 and roast it for about an hour more or until you have an internal temperature of about 145. And then while that's roasting, we will use the time to make a beautiful, very spicy vinegar parsley condiment for the top. So in a bowl, I'm going to throw half an anchovy filet which we call Italian MSG around here. I'm going to give that a little mashing with a freakishly small wooden spoon. To that, we'll add a little bit of red pepper flake. And by little, I mean an ungodly amount. But don't worry, it's not going to be too hot, trust me. We're also going to pour in some white wine vinegar. And then last but not least, a whole bunch of freshly chopped Italian parsley. Except no substitutes. What's wrong with curly parsley? It's too curly. It doesn't look as cool and it really doesn't have as good of a flavor, in my opinion. And we'll give that a stir. And that gorgeously green condiment's gonna perfectly balance all those aromatic spices and that rich fatty meat. So we'll just go ahead and set that aside until our pork is cooked. What's that, the pork roast is cooked? Well, that's perfect. So we're gonna pull out our pork roast. Once again, the internal temp is 145. I'm gonna loosely cover that with foil and let it sit there for 10 minutes before transferring it to a cutting board. And do not, under any circumstances, throw away those pan drippings. Because once you transfer that roast to your cutting board, 
You're going to throw a splash of water into that pan. I'm going to put that over medium low heat. I'm going to bring it to a simmer while scraping the goodness off the bottom. And we're going to use that to dip our toasted roll in. All right, you've heard of French dip. This is Italian dip. And believe you me, the Italians were dipping way before the French even thought about dipping. All right, so that's all set. We can go ahead and turn that off. And we are ready to finally slice into this thing. And yes, I was worried about this being too tough with all that fat and connective tissue. But you know what? If you slice it thin, it really does work. And you can see here, we're talking about some extremely, extremely beautiful meat. And I'm sorry, but this just smelled so unbelievably delicious. I had to steal a little piece, which was just beyond fantastic. So we're going to continue slicing that up nice and thin. And then it's time to build our porchetta sandwich. So I'm going to use a nice crusty chipotle roll that I toasted. I'm going to dip it in our jus or whatever the Italian word for juice is. And once we dipped our bread, we're going to pile it high with that beautiful aromatic pork. If you could smell this, you'd be like, dude, that smells so good. And it really, really does. It's hard to describe the aroma. We're also going to add a nice handful of arugula to the other side of the roll. And then before we bite into this, we're going to spoon over that hot parsley vinegar. Kind of a salsa verde effect with all that fresh parsley. It just elevates all those flavors, which are already very pronounced and very, very much in your face already. It just kind of expands all those further, and it really is an incredible sandwich sensation. So anyway, I'm deeming this alternative porchetta version a complete success, except for one small detail. Real porchetta, because it's covered with pork belly, gets really crispy on the outside. And when they slice it up to make your sandwich, they always chop up those crispy bits and kind of crumble that over the top. So that is missing here, but I thought of a great solution that I'm going to let you know about in the blog post. And if you think it has something to do with topping this with fried crispy pancetta, you might be onto something. All right? So head over to foodwishes.com to get all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy 